Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. This is a story about an old man who has lost all hope in life, all because of his misguided faith in a simple engine. However, with the help of his granddaughter and the courage of a small town, he may be able to find that special magic to make his engine run once more. Academy Award nominee Peter Fonda, Academy Award nominee Alec Baldwin, Most Adorable Smile Award Mara Wilson, really? That annoying Mrs. Doubtfire kid? Um, okay. And making his film debut, Thomas the Tank Engine. Okay. Whose joke is this? Come on, come on, where's the real summary? Come on, I mean, there is no way that Thomas the Tank Engine is in a Peter Fonda and Alec Baldwin movie. <laughs> See? I'm right. Peter Fonda and Alec Baldwin are in a Thomas the Tank Engine movie? What? Trust me, most of America was as shocked as you are. What the hell are these two big dramatic actors doing in something as brainless as Thomas the Tank Engine? I mean, it's not that it's a kid's film. Hell, a Disney movie or a Pixar movie or something of substance would make more sense, but... It's Thomas the fucking Tank Engine! The show PBS puts on when Clifford the Dog is too intimidating! But does it all come together? It's Thomas the fucking Tank! Let's take a look. Meet Thomas. He's our number one hero. Hello! So immediately, you're hoping Mr. Rogers' trolley comes in and kicks the oiled asses out of these characters, but unfortunately, we're not so lucky. We do, however, see our first problem with this film. Seven, eight... Who do we appreciate? Practicing your numbers, Gordon. I'm counting how many seconds late you are. <laughs> the mouths don't move! And it's fucking creepy! I mean, I understand on the show, because it looks like they have a budget that makes Gumby look like Studio Ghibli, but come on, you got Peter Fonda in this! You don't want Peter Fonda to think you're this goddamn lazy, do you? You got enough facial expressions in your library, but you can't come up with one motor to go inside the character's lips to make it move up and down? Come on, I can do better. Watch! Say, Gordon, I was just wondering why we live in a town called Sodor. Is that a retirement home for Lord of the Ring villains? I'm just trying to put together how we procreate. I mean, do trains have sperm? Goodness gracious me. Then that's somehow still less creepy than what you're doing! So we're introduced to a place called Shining Time, where the humans are just as lifeless as the trains. They even have their own obnoxiously fat profanity-laced Tinkerbell, played by Alec Baldwin. Who's going to sing to us about the town? This is your shining time. Climbing through stars to your own cloud nine. Here's our generic song. It sounds like hundreds of other songs. Things are always nice in this song. That's why no one remembers it. Generic song, generic song. Some jackass wrote this in his sleep. Generic song, generic songs. It shuts up your kids so you can't complain. And by the way, I think that you're going to help me and Thomas somewhere in this story. Um, okay. Are you gonna fill us in on that at all? That's kind of a lot of pressure to throw on a little kid and then suddenly not go into any detail. How would you like it if Barney the Dinosaur in the middle of a song said, I love you, you love me. Some shit's going down, be ready for it. We're a happy so I guess they find out a bad train named Diesel has come to town for no other reason than to cause trouble. I've come back to find a lost steam engine. What? I'm gonna destroy her and dominate you! Whoa! Keep it in the bedroom, Diesel! Well, I'm tired of being the bottom bitch. Just for once, I want to be in control of my train sperm! We were just talking about that. Do trains have sperm? Silence! There, Mutt. Paint job's finished. I reckon Shining Time is the best welcome sign of any town in our valley. <laughs> well, I'm glad you agree. Wow, kid, you gotta start seeing some girls. You hear that train whistle sooner than it hears itself. Well, all that excitement gets him working his way up to Muffle Mountain, 
where Peter Fonda plays the owner of a tank engine he's named Lady, whom we heard about earlier. Long ago, I made a mistake as Lady's caretaker. An evil diesel found Lady and threatened to destroy her. He chased her, used up all her coal, and then he crashed her. I tried my best to fix her up, but I've never been able to make up for the mistake I made. Okay, Peter, I'm just gonna tell you right now, you're trying way too hard here. This isn't Yuli's gold, it's Thomas the fucking tank engine! I don't usually say this, but he'd understand if you don't put your all into it. I mean, why can't you be more like... <laughs> it is a very important day. Well, maybe not like this. Yes, if Peter Fonda is too miserable in this movie, then Alec Baldwin is far too happy. He plays Mr. Conductor. Think Bob the Builder's lobotomized grandpa and you'll have a pretty good idea what he's like. Stacy, where did you find this painting? In an old locker. Uh, <laughs> no lady. The proper response is... Ah! Demon! Demon! Ah! This place looks like the island of Sodor, but how would Burnett Stone travel there without gold dust? I guess he travels back and forth between Shining Time and Soder, and that's why people aren't pissing themselves with terror whenever he arrives. But what's so weird about it is that there's nothing really magical about Sodor except for the fact that the trains talk. Wouldn't it make more sense just to have it all take place in one world? Why not just have a world where trains talk and that's it? Why have the real world in it at all? Hey, would you like to go to the magical land of Corridor? I sure would! Just like the real world, what's so magical about it? Well, that mask over there can smell garlic chicken spring rolls. Yo. This isn't really magical. Like Stacy, Mutt sensed danger. He didn't want either Billy or me to leave Shining Time. Oh yeah, he looks really distressed there. I have to concentrate now, Mutt. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Mutt. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. I know. You're thinking to yourself, how could any successful actor bring himself to star in a movie that requires him to say the line, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle? Well, I think you underestimate the power of those words. I think Baldwin saw the possibilities of that line, the magic it possesses, and the ability to touch an entire generation. Don't act like these words haven't had a huge impact on your life! Hey! Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Fuck yeah, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Woo! Yeah! yeah! <laughs> You're right, yeah! Fuck yeah! Meanwhile, we see Fonda continuing to mope. Get used to this, folks. There's a lot of it. The man with the sparkles told me one day one of his family would return. But until then, to guard her well, young Burnett. But I didn't guard you well. For God's sake, lighten up! It's Thomas the fucking Tank Engine! Save it for a movie that deserves it! Like 310 to Yuma or The Limey! Even Ghost Rider deserves more energy than this! I just don't seem to understand about about magic in it. Okay, we're going to break while I get someone to clearly show him how not to give a shit in a performance. Yes, sir. Yes, give me the girl from the remake of Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, by the way, sir. Huh? Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Fuck yeah! Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Ah! Ah! Here we go, Fonda. This is the proper performance to give in this movie. Mara Wilson, clearly going through puberty, clearly at the age where she's embarrassed to be seen in this piece of crap, and clearly just doing this to pay off her future student loans. Watch this performance and tell me if at any moment she looks invested. Grandpa's been so sad since Grandma Tasha died. Did you get his present? Here. I'm making him a friendship bracelet. Awkward expression. Honey, that's beautiful. Don't know how or where to look. But I'd rather just stay here with you. No commitment whatsoever. I know. Come here. Give the same uncomfortable hug you'd give a Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. I'm gonna go up this way. Okay. And lead the actress you obviously just met today. You see, Fonda? That's what we're expecting. Learn from the master. She clearly doesn't give a crap. 
So we find out a little bit more about that lady engine and why Diesel wants to destroy her so much. Diesel knows that the lost engine in the legend really exists. What legend? Of an engine whose magic makes her more powerful than Diesel will ever be. That's why he wants to find her. By the way, you notice something seriously lacking in Thomas the Tank Engine? Yeah, Thomas the Tank Engine! He's barely in this! He shows up, smiles, and then we cut to either overacting, underacting, or good god, it's Thomas the fucking Tank Engine acting! Oh well, maybe Baldwin can bring some balance back to this flick, as he stands here completely alone and yet talks to himself. So who dropped the ball then? Oh, there you are. I'd like to have a nice cup of hot cocoa. Would you fellas care to join me? No? What would you rather do instead? Go outside and play? Well, I can understand that. What do you think? Why do you keep hitting him like that? You're gonna have to have a timeout. Oh, 30 Rock, please give him a career. I'm sure he'll gladly sacrifice his thin physique and black hair if you only give him a hit show. But Diesel arrives as Baldwin discovers he suddenly can't use his sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> Losing your sparkle, huh? All we can do is hold our blowjob faces. Uh, what is that? That's right, it's sugar, Diesel. And if I throw this in your tank, it'll seize you up for good. Wait, so sugar is the big kryptonite in this world? Well, why doesn't he just carry a packet of Splendor around all the time, then? Or hell, if the magic dust is so magical, can't he just bring a normal-sized person into the world? There'll be a giant there! So, where's Dad? Think, people! Think! My family never really told me what to do in a gold dust crisis. They only said if you can't remember the clue, the windmill will remind you. But where is the windmill? So he tries to figure out his sparkle impotency, but thankfully, hope comes in the form of Haley Joe Osmond in a wig. I don't suppose you know what track three is, do you? Is it that one? Well, why not? What the hell could go wrong? Just getting on a train that could go anywhere that I was advised by a dog to board. It's not like it could lead to another crazy Alec Baldwin breakdown. I notice you left your thinking cap behind. Try these instead. They're good for the brain. Plane. Drain. Mountain? Fountain? That might be something. I think I'll try the celery. No, you need to try the antipsychotics, honey. Sausage? Bicycle? Huh. Toothpaste? Beach? Huh. Beach. Beach! That's it! That's it! <laughs> okay, I have no idea what that scene was about. I am now totally convinced that Alec Baldwin went nuts and they just shot a movie around it. Hell, maybe it was supposed to be about a grandfather, his granddaughter, and a train. But Baldwin just started shouting gold dust and sparkle, 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 and they had to make a kid's movie out of it. This is sadly starting to make sense. Now he's talking to flowers. It's all good. In this world, a mental breakdown is totally understandable, but not always acceptable. Just look at how he reacted when Percy came in late. I'm going to let you know just how disappointed in you I am and how angry I am with you that you've done this to me again. You are a rude, thoughtless little pig, and I'm going to straighten your ass out. Don't piss off, Mr. Conductor. So Mara comes across Mr. Conductor's son named Junior. And in answer to your question, I have no idea why he's Scottish. But really, if that's the biggest concern in this movie, you're in a good place. Hey, huh? Who are you? I'm Lily, who are you? See you, Junior. I'm totally stoned, so none of this surprises me. See you, Lily. Well, that was pointless. So she's picked up and driven to her grandpa's place, where they form an immediate connection by him poking the fireplace and her going straight to sleep. It's the human bonding that makes this film work, folks. But Diesel finds Mr. Conductor and threatens to throw him off a bridge. Ten. Nine. Seven, six. Normally I'd say that's by accident, but it's Alec Baldwin. He knew what he was doing. Four, three, two. Did you put all this here for me? But you must have known that I was coming. How kind of you. Am 
I, Alec Baldwin's delusion? Is this all Alec Baldwin's delusion? And for that matter, is this the so-called help the audience was supposed to give that was mentioned earlier? Come on, even Care Bears was more interactive than that! They at least asked you to do something! Any movie can just show something being done and claim that you did that! You did that! You! You did that! You! You did that! You! For shame! This must be the clue to unlock the source of the gold dust. Stoke up the magic in the mountain and the lady will smile. Uh, are you sure that's not toke up the magic? Because I think a lot of that was going on while this movie was made. Good morning, Mr. Stone. I'm riding into Shining Time. Could Lily come with me if she'd like to? I'd like to. Yeah, by the way, something else to keep in mind in this movie is that Mara Wilson never keeps her lip closed. It hangs out like in every single scene. I'd like to. <laughs> sure. She can go. Well, lady, what are we to do? It all seems so much easier when Tasha and I were children. <sighs> it's Thomas the fucking tank engine! Every time you appear on screen, you make me want to slit my wrist! Don't ever host a birthday party! Come on, kids. Let's go hit the piñata. <laughs> the piñata is dead and you killed him. But Mara comes across Junior again, and she convinces him to take her with him to Sodor. Can we be back here by sunset? I hope so. Yeah, probably she'll wait for them to meet at this moment as opposed to earlier. Just would have saved time. So he shrinks her down to his size, and you'll never guess who they come across. Thomas! Yeah, remember? He's in this damn thing, too! He goes ahead and takes them to Mr. Conductor, who's still trying to figure out the clue he was given. Hey, cuz. You're looking terrible. Wait, are they... Father and son or cousins? He calls him Junior, yet he's constantly saying cuz. Junior, I want you to listen to me, and I want you to listen to me very carefully. This is his cousin. Maybe they're both. If the Mario Brothers can be father and son, anything's fucking possible! So they figure out they can't travel through worlds without gold dust, but somehow trains can still travel, okay? But there's some kind of magic that makes Lady work, but they don't know what it is. But it might have something to do with this coal that they found in the tunnelway in between worlds, which will allow Lady to make gold dust as she rides, and when did this plot become the kids' version of Memento? Yeah, it gets really needlessly complicated, especially for a film that's meant to be so simple. But I guess the coal they find does get Lady working, and they ride her off again. Well, my lady, the lights are all green for you now. Well, take some Prozac. But they come across the evil Diesel, and they have to outrun him. <laughs> ah! Nope, oh, he just sobered up and realized the movie he was in. She's part of the clue to the source of the gold dust! Now I'll get you, Burnett Stone! No, you won't, because the magic you refuse to believe in will get the better of you! You know what? Go back to being depressed. I think I like it better that way. But they come across an unstable bridge where Diesel meets his end. Prepare to meet Amtrak in hell! So he's saved by a boat, but they do figure out that the shavings from Lady mixed with water from the well makes gold dust. Whoopity hoopity. And so we've come to the happy end of our story. And it's time for all of us to go home. Just like Thomas. Oh yeah! There was a Thomas in this movie, wasn't there? I almost forgot! I mean, jeez, between all the subplots, confusing stories, needless celebrities, and horrible editing, I can't remember what the hell I just witnessed. This movie is so bizarre in its existence. Why is it here? Why did it need to be made? Why did it have these people in it? Is it supposed to increase viewership of the show? Well, I've never seen the show and I don't think I ever will either. It's an odd film with creepy trains that look soulless and the less I can remember it, the better. I mean, I can't think of one good thing that this movie gave us. 
Hey! Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Oh yeah, good point. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember, so sparkle, you don't have to- Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Yeah, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! Sparkle, 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 man! Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle! That's some that shit! Every now and then, there appears a sign That points just round the bend To a place you'll find Covered in clover The magic comes over you Showing a bright Fuck yeah, Sparkle, Sparkle, Sparkle! <laughs> sparkle! <laughs> sparkle! Because the magic you refuse to believe in will get the better of you.